Hello everyone and welcome to Tech Fix Flicks. In this tutorial we will take preparatory steps toward the ultimate installation of Windows. We will begin by recovering important information about our existing Windows installation which will be required as part of the installation process. During the installation we will be required to determine whether we are installing a 32 or 64 bit version of Windows. Assuming you can currently access Windows you can easily recover this information from your existing installation. First click the start menu icon, then type about. You will now see information about your PC. Note the information under system type which will be either 32 or 64 bit. Your new installation will be of the same type. Having noted this information you can safely close the about window. You now may need your Windows activation code. The activation code for some systems is embedded in the firmware and you may be fortunate in this regard. Nevertheless, for your own peace of mind prior to undertaking the installation, you may wish to be certain that you have the activation code should you need it. The code may be physically printed on a sticker attached to the device or enclosed as a keycard if your copy of Windows was a retail purchase. It may have been sent via email as part of an online transaction. If you are unable to locate your activation code, you may be able to obtain it directly from a functional existing installation. There are a number of key recovery programs available via the internet. In this instance, we will utilise Prodigy from Nursoft. We begin by navigating to the Prodigy product page at the link on screen now, and also included in the description accompanying this video. Click the link which reads download links at the bottom of this page, or scroll down directly. We now click the link Download Product Key for X64. The program downloads as a zip file. Clicking on the downward pointing arrow, we select the option Show in Folder from the menu which appears. The zip file is shown in our Downloads folder. Now right click and select the option to extract all. Windows now asks us to determine where the file will be extracted and we simply accept the default by clicking on the Extract button. We have left ticked the option to show extracted files when complete, so the extracted files will be immediately presented to us. We can now run Product Key by clicking on it. And you should be presented with your Windows key, which you should note for use during the Windows installation. Having served its purpose, you can now close down Product Key and delete it entirely from your system by selecting both the original zip folder and the uncompressed folder right clicking upon them and selecting delete from the menu which appears. If you need to purchase a Windows license it is advisable only to use a trusted retailer as cheaper licenses supplied on auction sites and elsewhere may have a questionable history and may not successfully activate your installation. On screen and linked in the description below are links to Amazon's Windows 10 offerings which can offer immediate access to activation codes. Having successfully obtained your product key you can now proceed to download the installer. Open your default web browser and navigate to the Windows 10 download page at the link shown on screen and in the description accompanying this video. Click on the blue download tool now button. The media creation tool will now download. Click to run the media creation tool. User account control will appear and you should select yes to confirm your instruction. There follows a brief pause whilst the media creation tool initialises. You are taken to a screen detailing applicable notices and licence terms, which you are required to accept in order to proceed. A further brief pause follows your acceptance of the terms. At the next screen, there is a choice for the location of the new installation. Even if it is your intention to upgrade the device that you are using, you should still select the option to create installation media for another PC. You are now presented with the opportunity to select your language, edition and architecture. If the defaults are not suitable, you can make appropriate selections using the drop down menus on the right. Ensure that your architecture selection matches the specification of your system, either 32 or 64 bit, using the information you recorded earlier in this tutorial. You can now choose between using a USB drive or burning to disk by creating an ISO file and using DVD burning hardware and software. We will now look at both options. 
Should you choose to burn to disk, the media creation tool will create a file which you can save for future burning. We will cover burning to disk in a separate tutorial and you will need DVD burning hardware and a blank DVD. For now, choose the folder in which the media creation tool will save the ISO file. Once you've clicked save, Windows will begin downloading. You may wish to take a break at this point, particularly on slower connections, as the download is sizeable. Once downloading is complete, it will verify before creating the media. You are given the option to burn to disk at this point, or you can click finish and burn to disk following the instructions in our DVD burning tutorial. Note that the setup program will perform a brief closure routine prior to exiting. Rewinding to the point at which the paths diverged, this time we opt to install to a USB device or stick. We have inserted a USB drive into an appropriate port on the device and the drive is greater than 8GB in size. Clicking next will begin the download. The downloading process is identical to that witnessed previously. As before, you may wish to take a break as the lengthy download progresses. When complete, you can eject the USB media to use in the reinstallation. As we have mentioned USB sticks, it may be worth noting that you require a stick of 8GB in size. Any smaller will have insufficient capacity to accommodate the Windows installer, whilst any larger would be potentially wasteful for this project unless subsequently used elsewhere. When purchasing a stick, you should obtain a recognised brand from a premium retailer, as auction sites are littered with low quality sticks advertising false capacities. On screen now, and linked in the description accompanying this video, are a number of sticks of suitable quality from reputable brands available from Amazon. Whilst neither the brands in question nor Amazon have sponsored this video, nor does their inclusion constitute a recommendation, experience suggests that these devices will be of a suitable quality for this task. Furthermore, you may wish to acquire a second stick or portable hard drive in order to back up your personal files, device drivers, and even your complete system, as detailed in the remainder of this tutorial, as the stick used to accommodate the Windows installer will be used solely for this purpose. Now we will back up the most crucial files contained on the system. Click the File Explorer icon on the taskbar to proceed. For most users, the most common locations to save user-generated content are the Desktop, Downloads, Documents, Music, Pictures and Video folders. You may have other folder locations, and you should follow this advice for those folders also. Here, we select each of the folders by first clicking on the desktop folder, then pressing the shift key and clicking on the video folder. Each of the folders in between will be automatically selected. Alternatively, hold the control key while selecting individual folders. Now, right click to bring up the file menu and select properties. This will reveal the size of disk required to accommodate your files, and you should use or acquire a disk of this size or larger in order to copy them, remembering this disk should be separate from the one used to accommodate the Windows installer. If you are purchasing, consider memory sticks or portable USB hard drives of appropriate capacities. At the time of this recording in 2018, it is recommended that any requirement above 128GB is more economically achieved via a hard drive. With the relevant folders selected, right click to bring up the file menu and select copy. Then insert your USB stick or portable hard drive and navigate to it before selecting paste. Dependent upon the quantity of your files and the speed of your drives, this process may take some time to complete. You should also check the copy to ensure that all relevant files have been duplicated. Finally, you should store this backup in a safe place. Alternatively, you may wish to consider cloud storage, and we will review these options in a future tutorial. Now that you have secured your personal files, it's time to back up your hardware drivers in the event that Windows 10 does not install them by default as part of a new installation. There are many driver backup utilities available, and in this example, we will use Driver Backup, which can be freely downloaded at the link on screen and in the description accompanying this video. The latest version of Driver Backup can be obtained by clicking the Download button. The software downloads in the form of a zip file, which we will need to decompress. Right click on the downward pointing arrow 
and select the option to view in folder. The folder containing the zip file opens. Right click on the zip file, select the option to extract all and accept the default installation path by clicking extract. The extracted folder will open automatically. Whilst this folder contains many files, we are looking to run DRVBK, identified by its colourful icon and status as an application. Double click on the application to run. User account control interjects to verify your intention to run a program. Click yes to proceed. The installation requires a supporting resource to properly install. If you already have the .NET Framework installed, you will not see this request. We ask to download and install this feature. The .NET installation procedure commences and its progress can be monitored until completion. Once the .NET Framework has been installed on the system, the driver backup installation will successfully complete. For clarity, we have closed the File Explorer window. With the program now open, we can see a comprehensive list of hardware drivers installed on our system. We click the Start Backup button to proceed, which opens a second window. We need to select the destination for our backup, and we will use the box which appears to select our USB drive as the destination for our driver backup. If you have backed up your personal files, you can use the same disk to save your driver backup. With the destination selected, we can now click Start Backup and the process quickly completes. We can now open our USB disk to verify that the drivers have successfully copied. Inside the drivers folder, we will find a comprehensive catalogue of the drivers on our system. Most of these drivers will not be required in the reinstallation, as Windows maintains an extensive database for the vast majority of devices, and yet more can be obtained via Windows Update or the device manufacturer's website. However, your USB drive can now be utilised in the event that the relevant driver is not installed by default. Although we are planning to overwrite the existing installation and begin anew, it also makes sense to perform a full system backup of the existing installation, which will protect us against a catastrophic mistake, such as deleting a crucial file or an application which cannot be accessed in any other way. This backup would need to be fully restored as individual items cannot be extracted from it. We've covered the restoration process in the second tutorial in this series. The backup will be a significant percentage of the existing installation and will therefore require a reasonable degree of storage. In this instance, we have attached a removable hard drive of 50GB in size, which the system has labelled E. We will use the tools built into Windows to perform this backup, although both free and paid for third party apps also exist. We begin by clicking on the start menu and typing backup, selecting backup settings from the menu which appears. Although we aren't using Windows 7, we will be taking advantage of a feature first launched in that release, and therefore we click on go to backup and restore Windows 7, which brings us to this window. We now click the small link in the upper left corner to create a system image. Windows will now take a moment to discover backup devices. It discovers the backup drive which we have attached. In the event of multiple devices being available, you can select between them using the drop down menu. We click next and are invited to confirm our selection. We review these choices carefully and they show that our main Windows drive C will be backed up to the backup drive E. We now observe the progress of the backup. The progress bar will indicate advancement towards completion. We are offered the opportunity to create a system repair disk, however, these features are available in the Windows installation media which we downloaded earlier in this tutorial, and therefore we can simply click no here. We are now advised that our system has been successfully backed up. Reviewing the content of our backup drive shows the data from the backup. Once again, the backup drive may now be removed and kept in a safe place. The final preparatory step is also possibly the most important, as you need your PC to detect your installation media, the USB stick or DVD we created earlier in the tutorial. Typically, when your computer starts, you will see a number of screens predominantly containing black and white text prior to Windows launching. Those screens are generated by BIOS, the computer's basic input-output system. 
One of the key functions of BIOS is to determine the order in which drives are processed as the computer starts up. In every other normal instance, you would want your PC to boot from the main hard drive, which contains your copy of Windows. However, in a reinstallation, we want to change this default order to make sure our PC boots from the installation media rather than the main hard drive. In order to achieve this, we need to instruct BIOS to boot from the installation media first. You may have noticed that, when your device starts, a screen advises you to press a particular key to enter BIOS or setup. That key may vary from machine to machine, but is often F2, F8, F12 or delete. If the key is not specified on the startup screen, you may need to check your device manual or the manufacturer's website. Once you are aware of the necessary key, you should press it immediately after powering on the system. Press it repeatedly if required. You should now have entered BIOS. If you have not entered BIOS and are taken directly to Windows, you will need to close down the system and try again. Once inside BIOS, you will need to navigate to the device's boot screen. There are a number of BIOS layouts and depending on the age of your machine, you may or may not be able to use your mouse for this operation, with all the BIOS versions being reliant upon arrow and function keys for navigation. Navigate to the section of your BIOS labelled Boot, and change the boot order so that your USB drive is the first boot device. If you are using a DVD, make sure that your DVD drive is the first boot device. Note that, after successful installation of Windows, we will need to reverse this setting back to its original position in order that the system returns to booting from the main hard drive. Having made the change, follow the instructions in BIOS to save it. Insert the USB drive created using the media creation tool earlier in this tutorial to any available USB slot. If, in the alternative, you are using a DVD, insert it into the drive now. Once your machine restarts, it should detect your installation media in accordance with the settings you have just entered in BIOS, and the Windows installation program should begin. If instead you are taken to your regular Windows installation, you should review the BIOS settings to ensure that the boot order places your USB or DVD drive first. That concludes the preparatory phase of this tutorial. The fourth part of this tutorial will examine the step-by-step -step process of installing Windows onto your primary hard drive. Thank you for watching this tutorial. Hopefully you found it useful. If you'd like more, you are very welcome to subscribe to the TechFix Flix YouTube channel by clicking on the subscribe button. Subscription is, of course, entirely free and provides easy access to all of the videos posted here. Clicking on the neighbouring bell icon means you will be notified whenever a new video is posted. Until your next tech fix, goodbye.